Hello out there, this is Pamela Fagan Hutchins, and you have found Wine, Women, and Writing, which is the show where I talk with other authors about their complex, authentic female characters and the often real life um, uh, stories they're based upon, whether those are personal or historical. And I hope to hear a little of both today from our guest. Before we get started, I wanted to make the usual few announcements. This is a solely only copyrighted production of Authors on the Air Radio, a Global Radio Network, producer Pam Stack, you rock, thank you so much. And I also wanted to let you know that if you wanna catch past shows, including this one we're doing today, if um, you're not seeing it live, you can always rewatch um, at PamelaFaganHutchins.com. You can also get my newest release, Scapegoat, or perfect holiday gift for the little ones in your life, my first children's book, Poppy Needs a Puppy. So. With no further ado, we're done with the boring stuff. Let's get to our guest today. I want to welcome Wendy Warsanger, who's got a wonderful new historical novel out, Prospects of a Woman. Welcome to the show. Hi there. Thank you so much for having me. I am delighted to have you this morning, and I am delighted that we solved our technology problems. Yes. You guys, it's, it's always a fire drill. <laughs> so it's my patient. Once you get those little, you know, it's like a jinx. Once you get that done, it's like, oh, now I've got this. My day, yeah. I'm totally on it. Okay. Yeah, today's going to be a great day. I beat the internet. Yay. You are actually coming to us from the West Coast. Is that correct? Yes, I'm actually on the South Shore of Lake Tahoe to, right okay. now. And we're getting snow, which I'm super excited about. That's great. Is that where you live full time or is this a um, a seasonal or a getaway? It's kind of a getaway at the moment. It's been, we sort of decamped here for the time being. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I was born and raised in Sacramento and yeah. we live in the Bay Area. Okay. So you're not too far um, from the beauty of Lake Tahoe uh, in the first place. Yes. I've only been once, but it's gorgeous. Oh, it's just paradise. It's yeah. just paradise. And when it snows, it's so beautiful. I'm looking out my window and it's just I feel so fortunate. You you know, to have peace and beauty right now when the world is a little bit crazy, because you guys, if you're seeing a replay or listening to a replay, we did this show when we are ramping, surging back up with COVID and yeah. you know, all the world is still crazy in the US post-election. And it's really nice to find that peace and that getaway. Yeah, yeah, it is, um, it's a little nerve wracking though. We went, I went to the store yesterday and again, like no paper towels, no toilet paper. I was, I, was like, I was like, really? We're doing this again? Guess, you know, whatever, we keep ourselves safe. And so I just took my one, you know, yeah. roll as I am allotted, which is fine. I'm good with that. It's whatever fine. we need to do to keep our community safe and um, everybody gets what they need, you know? Exactly. If people need a lot of toilet paper, then God bless them. We run a lodge and we just closed for the season last week. And so the toilet paper shortage here just happened. But when you go in and they tell you, you can only buy one pack and yeah. you're pushing 12 people, it's like a problem here. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. learn what conservation is all about. <laughs> exactly. Our place is off the grid and we tell people it's about conservation, but we didn't warn them it was about toilet paper. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, are you able to um, to find the piece to write when you're up in Tahoe? Is it a good spot for you creatively? It's so luxurious because it's quiet and I don't have the chaos you know, of living in the city. Um, but right now, since my novel launched in October, I am just busy with doing the promotion, which is a totally interesting situation for me because I'm a real introvert and I'm not used to putting myself out there so much. And people are really, um, you know, excited about the novel, asking me all about it and wanting to connect. And so I'm just really putting, you know, I'm working on putting myself out there. So right now I'm not writing. I, I, my plan is to begin again at the end of January. So I'm giving myself a certain period of time where I'm going to commit to, um, you know, I guess the sales cycle of the book or whatever. Exactly. <laughs> They yeah. do their life cycles. And I don't think that extroverts realize how much emotional energy and creative energy it saps from introverts to put yourself out there. It's hard. Yeah. And the whole social media thing is very weird. Like I am not into social media, but you know, you've written so many books, right? So you know how this all goes. 
I, I and it's become easier for me over time. So it, I, I hope it'll become easier for you. But back in the beginning, book tours when you had to do them live this year, you don't have to, mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to actually interact with humans. It was horrifying. And it just, oh my gosh. I, I took six weeks off after promotion before I could do anything because yeah. I was so run out. So I totally feel you, sister. Yeah, oh, you oh, get oh. it. Yeah, you get it. And um, yeah, it's really the antithesis of what it takes emotionally to create an, a story a narrative and to have quality writing. You need quiet. You need to be in your room. Uh, you need to be processing characters and plays. And it's just, um, there's no way I could be writing right now. It's just impossible. Which and means to a certain extent, even though it's hard, I hope that you are finding that joy in the release of your baby into the world. A first novel and the release of a first novel, that is super special. And congratulations to you. Oh, thank you so much. I am. I feel very fortunate. And I've been getting incredible feedback. Um, I'm now on two BuzzFeed hot lists, which I'm super excited about. Yeah. The re early reviews are good. So I feel very fortunate. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm fine. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I just kind of like, um, just soak it all in. Like, yeah. yeah. Or look back on it later or something, but, uh, but enjoy it because you only get one first novel and one first child and one first yes. everything, right? Yeah, that's really good advice. I appreciate that. So let's talk about Prospects of a Woman. I want to, you, first of all, to tell everybody a little bit about it, which is the hardest thing in the world for a writer, right? You know, you like write a book that's really long and then someone says, give us the, you know, 10 second version. Right, right. Um, well, maybe, okay, so yes, I'll tell you about it, but first let me tell you about what's, what inspired it. So I was yeah. born and raised on the American River in Sacramento, and growing up, I didn't learn about uh, women in California in our history at all when I was in school. And I was really confused by the depictions in novels and movies of women in the West, because those weren't the women I knew, and they weren't the women I grew up with, and they weren't the women in my family. Um, our family goes back to 1860 California. So I started doing research to try to understand like, okay, who were the early women in the West? And what I realized is that they weren't really what the sort of typical stereotype that you think of of a woman in the West was. So I set out to research and I, um, what the result was, was um, sort of a narrative which is sort of, a, it's a more authentic retelling of a woman's contributions to the West. And in particular, it, um, the storyline is a married couple, Elizabeth and Nate, come out to California, land on the American River in 1850. And she realizes her husband's not really who she thought. And she sort of sets out off on her own. So that's the beginning of the story. I love, I love that. When you stop and think who creates the narrative about what was back then, it's, uh, I want to use the word sexism, but but let's instead say a male dominated narrative because yeah. that's who was writing the books that were getting published. It was who was controlling the voice about uh, of the women that were back then. But when you think about what it took for a woman to set off across the country, it was harder in many ways than it was for men. It was difficult for everyone. And to tell that story is exciting. It's groundbreaking. It's important. And I just love that you did it. Oh, thank you so much. I, you're right. Like the, the narratives have been told by men typically, and they tend to be romanticized sort of um, myths, right? The men were the saviors, the women needed rescuing, and mm -hmm. um, they were either sort of prostitutes or housewives. That That is absolutely completely only a very small portion of the right. of women in the West. And in California in particular, when women came out here in 1850, they were given a whole broad set of rights that, that uh, no other state had provided for women. So actually they had a lot of power and agency. They were able to sign contracts, own their own property. Um, they could get divorced. They could keep custody of their children. And in no other state were they allowed to do that. So they had a lot of agency to go out and sort of um, be on their own, be independent if they wanted to, divorce, find a okay, trade up husbands. We <laughs> read a lot of diaries and that was the funniest part is that the women would sort of get there and they'd look around and they'd be like, yeah, I think I can do better. It was fascinating. <laughs> yeah, 
they certainly it certainly was a buyer's market um, for yeah. you know for numerosity. <laughs> yeah, it was twenty to one, right? So these women were were really valued. They weren't particularly in danger because they were protected, you know, as a like a valuable commodity. Yeah. So all the the narratives that we see of them like being scared and um, you know. Uh, in danger of, you know, all of these men and, um, you know, needing to be a prostitute, like as their only option or marry somebody to take care of them. That, that was completely inaccurate in California. I absolutely love that, that this is what this novel explores, that we get past the notion of, you know, it's the Halloween costumes, right? <laughs> I look, I look at what people wear for Halloween and, and I think, where in the world did we get the idea that the only role for women was that you were either, you know, a witch to be burned at the or a hottie nurse or a hottie nurse, right? <laughs> and that's the way we look back on history as well. And, and you're right, it's this romanticized version that cast men in the role of a savior. And I'm not going to bash men because I love my husband and my mm -hmm. sons and I like their muscles. And I think our division of labor that we've worked out so that I don't have to scoop horse poop as often as then is yeah. super cool. Right. But we contribute equally in different ways, right. and in ways that we work out as a family. And I love going back and exploring how women did that in other time periods so now yes and you know i i'm also I've, i'm married 25 years i've got two boys i uh love my husband too um and you're right it's it's that we were very important to the building of the west and i yeah. think that's part of what has not been fully realized in literature right right uh, what I guess that it is uh, prostitution was not the only valuable contribution, right? And yeah. you know, it's like, and you watch old Western shows, you know, and yeah. the Miss Kitty or things like that. Yeah. And, and all I remember Miss Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, God bless everybody to put that show together. At least it kept the West alive. But there's yeah. other stories to tell. So now, how did you, how did you? get interested in writing a historical novel was that was it always that this story called to you or this type of story or was it um uh something else that made you think historical fiction is where i want to be because writing is where you want to be you have an mfa right from um yeah from the vermont college of fine arts i um you know i studied journalism and was always a writer i started my career writing about technology in the silicon valley and, but I love reading historical fiction. I've always loved it because you learn about a different time and a place and maybe people that you're not familiar with. You, It's almost like a little mini like schooling when you read a historical novel. Yes. So I've always been a huge fan of historical novels. And when my kids were young and I stopped writing in, in the, you know, about technology, I, we went on lots of trips. I took them on lots of trips into the gold country because the, you know, the rivers up there are so beautiful and the wilderness and I would, you know, they're two boys, incredibly energetic. So I needed to take them somewhere where they could. <laughs> just run. And um, I started falling into these like little stores and museums and getting these narratives of women diaries and firsthand accounts of their experience. And it just absolutely fascinated me. And I thought, oh, there is something here. This is, there's definitely something here. So then I went back to school to learn how to become a narrative writer because it's storytelling is very different than writing about technology. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I have a daughter that is getting her PhD in computer science and even, you know, and she'll send me her technical papers to edit and I'm like, oh, yeah, sweet. it's just, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a different <laughs> world. That's for sure. Totally different world. And what's one of the things that's excited me about your book and, and about this discussion, honestly, is that I live in Wyoming and Wyoming mm -hmm. was one of the other early states to grant women more rights. In yes. fact, we were voting rights. Yes. Voting rights. Voting and, rights before California, by the way. Yes. <laughs> and we have a really strong history of women homesteaders mm -hmm. that, for whatever reason, um, out here doing it pretty much on their own. And so this really spoke to me and spoke to 
when you look out, I'm looking out, I'm actually looking out the window now, which by the way, is this blinding sunlight just came through, which cast me in this spooky shadow. No, no, so, I think it was fantastic. <laughs> if anybody noticed the difference that's watching this, it's because there is natural light coming off mm -hmm. the mountain. Here. But when I look out and I, and I think about a place and I think about the kind of stories that I want to tell and I want to read, like yours, I look at the way that history and culture has shaped the place. And so often it's not what books tell us, whether it's the Native American um, vocalization of their history that then gets passed down in a written form by people that weren't part of that culture, or whether it's the retelling of the West by the romanticizing, you know, the casting of hero, you know, et cetera, that yeah. we've been talking about. And that you have to dig a little deeper. The thought that you found these diaries just has me all pumped up. I want to go, I want to go comb um, uh, and doors and find diaries now. And yeah, there's also been a lot of academic work in the last 25 years um, on women in the West and the diverse sort of cast of people that helped build the state. So um, that was also very helpful. I drew upon a lot of those resources as well. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Okay. So now with respect to this book and the fact that you're not writing till January, what do you do next after this? Do you already have in your mind where you go from here? I mean, it's a hard project to talk because this is so passionate. This is a, a, I don't know. It's something that I would think would be so personal writing something like this. Yeah. Well, it's fascinating because the ending, I'm getting a lot of feedback about the ending. I'm doing a ton of book clubs, which is, by the way, so much fun. So <laughs> women's group, women's book clubs are asking me to come in and like, of course, everyone wants to talk about the prospects of women, right? Mm -hmm. So it's such a great fit. And people are asking me a lot about the ending because the ending is, um, I don't want to give it away, but it's, um, <laughs> <laughs> so people are saying like, well, what happens next, right? So I'm considering. I, I've been doing a lot of research about um, women in San Francisco in 1920, sort of the artist salons, because we have uh, women in our family who were artists and dancers and poets. And um, I find that uh, period of time very interesting. So I'm sort of trying to figure out like how to bridge maybe the two um, with some other characters from my first book. So we'll see. I love that. Yeah. I I think that's exciting and fun. You know, when you think of taking history and bridging it through fiction and getting some continuity, generational continuity or things like that, and taking it into other exciting areas, that would be really fun. Yeah, I'm thinking like there's, some, there's some children in my book. And so I'm thinking, oh, what if they're like grown adults in the next? Anyway, so I'm just kind of playing around with that. But I'm having a lot of fun reading books about women in San Francisco in 1920. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like so much fun. And there's so many different and exciting um, uh, subcultures to explore in California. If that stays your interest, you know, it's right. You're really ripe with a lot of opportunity for a writer to explore. So yeah. that will give us a lot of things to look forward to. Now, do you draw on any of your own experiences in these books, even though they are, of course, historical? Because you have had uh, an interesting past, or at least so says your bio. Yeah. I've been laughing. It's like lifeguard, ski instructor, yeah. DJ, yeah. You know, and um, and some really uh, daring and exciting careers for for a woman, really yeah. so physical and not maybe non traditional. So, um, how, how do you draw on those things in your books? So. Yes, I think I drew a little bit on my life, but I also am surrounded by incredible women, um, both my friends and my family and my ancestors here in California. And I, um, so I had a lot of inspiration, we'll put it that way. But my, my novel is also filled with lots of provocative material. It's not PG-13. And um, <laughs> that is, a lot of that material is not first hand. <laughs> Because <laughs> no, isn't it hard? You sit down to write stuff like that and you think everybody's going to think that, yeah. I wrote, that I wrote this from personal experience. Yeah, that's oh, the most fascinating thing that I that I get is like people look at me and they're like, oh, my God, she wrote that. Like, you know, it's not a Western, but I when I was um, when I studied my MFA, uh, Cormac McCarthy was like my huge uh, inspiration. I did my master's thesis on him and you know, his work's not. No, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so 
Yeah, there's some provocative material. It's you know gritty. violence. It's yeah. you know it's gritty. <laughs> yeah, it's gritty. <laughs> but but it, I'm hearing that people really like it, so I'm like, okay, it's going down really well. So authenticity, right? And there are people very much so, and a lot of my readers, and God bless you guys. I write both gritty and non gritty because there are people that want it, and there's people that don't. Right. That's why I like to say in advance, like. Um, I think it's important that people understand. And actually on the cover of the novel, it says like, you know, there's a quote on the cover of the novel. So I just yeah. want to be clear. It's not PG yeah. and yeah. it's not for children. It's not for teens. <laughs> and personally, if I'm going to pick up a book and read, and some of my readers are going to be surprised because I have one series that's very clean. Mm -hmm. I love something that's authentic. I want something that. I feel like I was really there and I don't need the door closed when bad things happen or when sexy things happen or stuff like that. But some people do. And so I appreciate that you give them that. Uh, yeah. yeah <laughs> these kind of trigger warnings for literature. It, yeah. it's, it's important. You need to understand the book you're opening. Yeah, exactly. Bad things do happen in the real world. Yeah. And but we, also really good things too. And really yeah. surprising and fantastic and thrilling things. It's 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 the way that authentic literature reflects life, right? It's the good and the bad. And that that's what makes the good better is to have that real contrast. And I think that people will get that from your book as well as a wonderful look into a view of California history and hold on, the cat wants to say hello. The view of California history and um, women's role that is exciting and important. And I just, I love it. And I congratulate you. And I think it's fantastic. Thank you so much. And thanks for your advice on to savor it. I'm totally going to take that with me for the rest of the week. It should be an endless, endless party. And when you recover from the promotion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm looking forward to the next one. And you guys go out and check out Prospects of a Woman. And you can um, let Wendy know what you think by heading out to her website and getting her contact information, wendyvorsinger.net. Be sure to leave a review online. And that's the lifeblood of authors. Yeah. And everyone go out and have a good week and read a fantastic book. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you.